Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. A Vermont native made history when he became the first American ever to capture a medal in the men's biathlon at the World University Games, which were held in January in Lake Placid. Bjorn Westervelt from Stowe earned a silver medal in the 10-kilometer sprint. A day later, Bjorn won gold in the 12.5-kilometer pursuit. His medals came at the largest multi-sport event for collegiate athletes in the world. The game featured nearly 1,500 athletes from 46 countries. It's been about a month since the competitions, and Bjorn joins us today via Zoom. Thank you so much for being with us, and congratulations on your performances. Thank you, and thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Yeah, you bet. So biathlon is, is pretty unique in that it combines the rigors of cross-country skiing and the art of marksmanship. It's not a common sport that every kid gets involved in. So how did you get introduced to biathlon? Well, I've been on skis as long as I can remember, <laughs> and that eventually evolved to racing at a very young age with the Stowe Bill Coke program. When I was about 12, I had the opportunity to try biathlon at the Craftsbury Outdoor Center. And from then I was hooked. Right. And yeah, I've been I mean, on here you, here you are since you were, you know, a, a little a little kid. And then and then we have a few other pictures of you as a as a young man. And and yeah, what you were barely a teenager when you when you first um, got on a biathlon team, right? Yes, exactly. Was that your your parents' choice, or did you say I really want to I really want to do that thing? Oh, uh, it was fully my choice. <laughs> it's just something I wanted to try. Awesome. So prior to your success at Lake Placid, you were a four-time U.S. biathlon national champion. You're also a student at the University of Vermont. Why UVM and, and what are you studying? Well, first of all, I'm studying mechanical engineering, and I chose UVM for the combination of the ski team, the engineering program, and the proximity to biathlon training venues, namely Jericho, Crassbury Outdoor Center, and the new, new updated uh, Lake Placid Olympic venue. Right, which is beautiful, which is where you were for, for the competitions. Um, so you're, you're a Nordic skier on the UVM cross-country ski team, um, which is normally an individual sport, but at the collegiate level, it's a team sport. So how does being part of a team affect or impact your individual success? Well, come race day, it's an individual sport, but the rest of the year, it's very much a team sport and day-to-day -day training. Every day, we train together as a team and push each Push, push, push ourselves and each other in every workout. And definitely training with this group of teammates that are incredibly fast is one of the largest contributions to my individual success. And that motivation, healthy competition within the team makes a huge difference. So you push each other? Definitely. <laughs> yeah, okay. So um, what, um, what are the challenges that come with being a student ath athlete, especially in, in your sport? Uh, that would have to be time management. There's so many things to do at any given time, splitting my time between skiing, biathlon, and studies as well. Right. But I thrive under that pressure and love to always be doing something. So the same ability to focus and perform under pressure pressure applies directly to the head to head competitions of the sport of biathlon. Like a lot of people can ski fast and shoot well, but it takes something special to do both of those at the same time. And that's what I really love about biathlon. Right. So, yeah, it's, it's amazing that it's marksmanship. So you have to calm yourself down. I mean, I, and, and, and the pressures to do well for an elite athlete for your, like yourself is really tough. You have to um, be physically and mentally tough in, in a way. So um, are there also mental health services for athletes at, at UVM? There are. UVM actually offers mental health services to all of its students, not mm. just athletes. Mm. Yeah. Awesome, and I, I imagine that's really important. You have to psych yourself up. I mean, at your level, that's a whole other piece of business. It is. There's the whole mental aspect of the sport as well as the physical. Yeah, and and is there something that you do when you stop to take your shot? Do you just take three breaths? I mean, that was a big part of your win is that you got all five, um, you know, you got every target. Very the important. biggest part of doing it is not to do it any differently than how I practice it all the time. Ah, okay. <laughs> so it's always, it's for me, it's always three breaths before the first shot and then one breath between each shot. So that's what I did. Perfect. So, uh, and share with us some of your athletic successes prior to medal winning um, uh, at, at Lake Placid. I mean, clearly you're a national champion. What are some of the other competitions that you're involved in? 
Earlier this season for the UVM ski team, I raced uh, the first carnival races, which are the collegiate races. I had a top five finish as well as a top 10 finish. And before that, at US team IBU trials, I won one of the races and placed second and declined my spot for those competitions this season to focus on the UVM ski team. <laughs> Your wall must be full of trophies. <laughs> I love it. So um, how does it feel now to be the first American ever to capture a medal in biathlon at the World University Games? It's really a special feeling and pretty amazing. I'm very honored that I can represent US biathlon in such an amazing way. Skiing. Here, yeah, let's see, let's see your beautiful finish. This is, this is right here at the games. Yes! That was such an amazing moment right there. I was so happy. <laughs> and, and you're with all these people from all over the world. That must be, you must have a certain camaraderie. It is, it definitely is. The Ukrainian who got second, the two of us were, the, there's a clip later on of us, the two of us embracing at the finish line, just because it's a very special moment for everyone there. Great, and um, you know how how does an international champion, um, you know, being an international champion, you know, how do you, how do you prepare for a competition like that? The preparations day of the races are really no different than what I do before every day of training. The one thing that's different is maybe get like an extra good night's sleep, <laughs> but all those serious preparations are done over a course of years of training leading up to the competition. All right. I train averaging two workouts a day, six days a week, all year round. It adds up to over 700 hours of time just spent physically training, not including any of the shooting or commute to get to that training. It's basically a full-time job. Right. And then somehow you get your studies in there as well. Are you taking books with you on the buses? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> all the time. All the time. And, and do you have uh, mentors or role models who helped you get where you are today? Definitely. I've always looked up to the Norwegian biathlon legend who's referred to as the king of biathlon, Ola Niner Bjorn Dahlen. Mm -hmm. And here in the U.S., American biathletes Susan Dunkley and Sean Doherty were a huge inspiration for me and really guiding mentors, getting me both into the sport and pushing me to be the best biathlete I could be. And, you know, what, what are your, your goals for the collegiate ski season um, now uh, that that season is underway? How, how, how are you guys as a team? What are your goals? Our goals as a team is to obviously try to be the best in the country, win NCAAs. We were second last year. Right. So we're, uh, the goal is to win every carnival on the East Coast circuit and then bring a full team to NCAAs and ideally win. Okay. Um, so the team is shaping up. Are you, I mean, you were second last year. You're usually in the, in the top three or so. Um, how are you feeling about everybody? I'm feeling very good. We're the combination of uh, Ben Ogden, Jacob Nystad, Finn Sweet. It's an incredibly strong team, both on the men's and women's side. So it's shaping up to be a good year. Uh, so exciting. Well, well, we will be watching. And what about your academic and athletic plans for after you graduate? I graduate the spring of 2024, or yeah, 2024. And after that, I plan to pursue biathlon full time, hoping to train and race full -time with the U.S. Biathlon National Team with the goal of competing in the 2026 Winter Olympics. Uh. So exciting. So we will, we will have you at UVM for another year. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, again, I'm not sure if we saw that with the, the Ukrainian, but, but tell me a little bit about when you're working with international people. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of people's eyes were also on um, the Ukrainian who you were very, very tight with. What kind of relationships do you create when you're both competitors and your colleagues in a way, because you're, you, you are involved in this very unusual sport? It's really cool. The best part is being in medal ceremonies or opening ceremonies when we're all underneath our respective flags, but we're doing the same thing that we love together. So the sport really unites us on a common ground and it doesn't matter what country we're from. Great. So you will, will you talk uh, strategies at, at all with each other or are you careful about that? We will sometimes quite a, often the English or my whatever language there is isn't good enough to have full conversations but it's definitely uh it's definitely fun to joke around with how the races went cool and and who are your uh coaches right now um at uvm and and how important are they to your team and to your success what what kinds of things do they do to make sure that you're going to do the best that you guys can yeah the uvm head coach is patrick weaver 
And he's been working very closely with the U.S. Biathlon national team coaches that I trained with during the summer to uh, have the best training plan possible for me going into the race season. Okay, and you know, I, I want to I go back a little bit to the mental health piece because a lot of people talk about elite athletes just have so much pressure internally and externally. Um, so how do you, um, and, and it, it may or may not ever have been an issue for you, but how do you prepare yourself? And is there that an issue that, that your whole team talks about? It is, it's definitely right there. Uh, for me, I really like the pressure and mm. thrive well on the race day, like nervousness that some people get. Uh -huh. But it's definitely something that exists for a lot of people and something that we do try to talk about as a team. So you can really use use that pressure, um, use that excitement uh, for, yes, exactly. for, doing the, for doing the best you can. Especially in like the pursuit race where we're all starting head to head. Yeah. That coming into the range together, knowing exactly where you are, it, it's really beneficial to me. It pushes me mid-race. So what do you do if, I mean, you've come in second or third in some races, you don't win every one. So how do you slough that off? It's all part of the journey, the process of uh, getting to be as best as I personally can be. And so it's just a good step along the way. And you do all that, all that training every, every, every day. Exactly. Awesome. Bjorn, I want to congratulate you on this remarkable win. We're all very excited for you and the UVM team. We will be watching, and we will be watching in the future at the Olympics. We hope you make that. And, uh, and your, your next one is uh, coming up in March, um, another big competition in Kyrgyzstan. Uh, Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan, yes, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Safe travels to you. Thank you. It was great to be here. And once again, thank you for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well.